Start the clock. Ah, hello kitties, Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some Doctor Who news. You know, news from in and around the universe that could somewhat affect you in some way, but we won't discuss. Ah, uh, some interesting things hitting the media today, you know, as far as Doctor Who filming goes and whatnot. And um, also a lot of stuff was hitting about Star Wars today. And also someone said, are you going to do a Star Wars update? I'm like, I wish I had the time. I, I really would love to, but at the same time, I'm trying to remain a bit blissfully unaware of what's going on with Star Wars 7, and I'm leaving that to everyone else. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll sit down and discuss it at a future date. It's just, you know, like I said, my time's pretty well eaten up just doing this. So I'd love to do multiple videos on multiple subjects right now, but, you know, I got a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. So keep your eyes peeled. That's all I can tell you. Okay, but let's go ahead. Let's get into it now. I'm going to warn you all right now. Some of this can be deemed a bit spoilerish. So if you're not wanting to see anything regarding going on Doctor Who Series 9, you may want to turn this video off, okay, from this point on, because this is some stuff that was uh, picked up on filming, you know, that was put out. Okay, here we go. This was from various sources on Twitter. Okay, let's go take a look at it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at this. All right, here we got Capaldi with apparently a new gadget that's probably going to go bing or, or whatever it does. Um, let's see, see if we can... Whatever that thing is. And um, someone made a remark, well, he's wearing the hoodie, the jacket, and all that. Um, I think they were doing that because of the fact that it's pretty cold out. Also, he's wearing the, you know, the, the check trousers, which is kind of you know, reminiscent of uh, the Hartnell and Trout era. Um, so pretty interesting mix of an outfit there. Okay, keep moving on. And oh, check it out. There's that device he's playing with right there. And oh, looky who this is. Three guesses. Of course, it was concerning, you know, you know, courtesy of a gentleman named Matthew Horwood. Um, keep going on. And of course, that is obviously Maisie Williams, and she is dressed apparently as a highwayman. Uh, if, you've, if you're familiar with that. And then looks like they're doing a little line studying here off to the side. And here's a nice bit of a close-up on Maisie there. And someone even made the remark she kind of looks like Hamburglar. <laughs> okay, so, all right, we'll get into that there in a minute. Um, okay, now this is another interesting tidbit that came up over the weekend. I thought I better bring it up. I shared the article over on the Dr. Freedom Facebook page as well as over on the Whovians. This is an IMAX camera. What does that tell you, the folks who are watching this? You don't shoot a television program with an IMAX camera. Unless, anyone want to guess it? It's got to make me wonder if some, you know, one or two of these episodes, maybe the premiere ones, or maybe who knows how many, are going to wind up put out in the movie theater. Man, this was the one that this is a picture that came out on the official BBC Instagram. And you know, that is definitely an IMAX camera. Someone goes, What if they're throwing us off? I'm like, really? They went out and made a replica mock-up of an IMAX camera to stick in a photo. Why? You know, it's like <laughs> what would be the whole point of it? But so right here, that's an interesting conundrum right there to contemplate. Why are they using an IMAX camera for a TV series unless something is going into a theater, maybe? So I'll have to keep our eyes out for that later on a later date. Okay, but let's go ahead. Let's get into the rest of it. We got a lot of stuff to look at tonight really quick. So, all right, let's go for it. All right, first off over on Twitter, this is believed to be a filming location for Doctor Who, and this was put up by this person right here. And um, unfortunately... It's, a, yeah, it's at the Oskmouth Power Station, Newport, no public access. This was apparently was as close as they get, but you, you, know, you can see some stuff's going on in here. Um, yeah, like I said, unfortunately, this is going to be my closed set. It's no public access. It's a power station for crying out loud. They can't have you wandering around in there. You get shocked. And, you know, interesting stuff right there to look at. Okay, popping over here on Wales Online. If you're interested in those photos I just put up, you can find some of them here. Where I watch first video Game of Thrones actress Maisie Williams during filming Doctor episode near Castel Koch. Um, 
Um, see the foot I like Arya Stark. Her name's Maisie Williams. Come on, she's in a show called Game of Thrones. And yes, she does play Arya Stark. It's only about a minute long. And also it's not the sound isn't too good. You can't really hear the dialogue or anything like that if that's what you're worried about. So if you want to just give this a watch, you know, plus you don't really know what's going on in the scene other than apparently it's a coach that's been pulled over by <clears throat> what appears to be Maisie Williams' character as some kind of highwayman. And once again, there's the mask and the the get up and whatnot. Okay, it was in the it was in the news that had science fiction and fantasy fans watering in the mouth. Now, exclusive footage has been captured of the Game of Thrones actress Maisie Williams on the set of Doctor Who in South Wales. It was announced earlier this year that the British-based actress who plays Arya Stark in Game of Thrones would film as we all part in the BBC production. Now, footage has emerged of her filming alongside Peter Capaldi's Doctor near Castel Cosh. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. And this is over in Forest Farm. Now look away if you don't want to throw anything, you know, if you want to know anything about the upcoming episode. And here's a gallery right here if you want to go take a look at it. And they got some pretty interesting stuff here. Um, matter of fact, some of the images I don't have, there's the coach. Um, you know, once again, that's the coach, but now they got the horses linked up to it. And there's the Vasey on the horse. And then there we have these two characters here. Hmm. So obviously, definitely a period piece. Check it out. There's a, oh, that's pretty neat musket or pistol there. And, of course, we just saw that a little bit ago. And so if you want to go check these out, they're all right here in this Wales Online article. And link below in the description box is going to take you there when you want to go, okay? But also, key, like I said, as I warned you, some of this is a bit spoilery. So if you're still watching, I will. Okay, next up over on Blog Who, Jenna Coleman talks Doctor Who contract. That's right, actress Jenna Coleman has been speaking to the Observer magazine about leaving Doctor Who's uh, Peter Capaldi in Series 9. Uh, quote, my contract came up last year, and I decided that because I'd only done one series with Peter Capaldi, I wanted a bit more time to explore that relationship. Also, he's the Gandalf of Doctor Who. He seems to have that mythical thing about him, and we're great buddies behind the scenes. You pick up a script and get a sniff of where things are going, but any speculation Peter and I have, the story never goes in that direction, end quote. Jenna Coleman will be seen starring, blah, blah, blah. We all know that sometime this autumn. And, of course, it's debuting with The Magician's Apprentice. So, and, of course, they exclusively revealed, yeah, that's how come I saw it on several places. No, no, no discredit to Blogger, but... Oh, allergy season's here. Can you tell? Oh, man. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> it's that time of the year when i got to keep a ready supply of snot tissues right next to the computer. All right. <laughs> so, interesting, you know, stuff here to take a look at, you know, as far as Jenna Coleman goes, because I heard it was actually Peter Capaldi who lobbied to keep her on. Uh, lobbied to keep her on. Next stuff over on Doctor News, Big Finish is going to produce new Torchwood audio plays. That's right, Big Finish have announced they've secured the rights to Torchwood, and they will produce six new stories starring Captain Jack and his team this autumn. The licensing deal with BBC Worldwide will allow the team to recreate the series with members of the television cast, and the range will be launched in September with the return of John Barrowman and his forces, Captain Jack Harkness. Conceived as a spinoff for Doctor Who, Torchwood was created by Russell T. Davies, made its debut in 2006. The top secret organization Torchwood saved Cardiff and off in the world from alien menaces and, and terrible forces, trying to keep the city. <coughs> ah, sorry about that. My throat's drying out. I am. From the interdimensional rift that ran through it. So if you want to go check these out, they're saying they got some more details right here. So keep your eyes peeled on Big Finish. The additional cast members for the series will be revealed later. Torchwood, the conspiracy, will be released in September of this year, and the remaining five installments will be following monthly from January 2016. So it's interesting to have Torchwood back, but to be honest with you, I'd rather have him back on screen. They need a chance to redeem themselves after the mistake that was called Miracle Day. All right, they did so brilliantly well with Children of Earth, and then they fell flat with that. Okay, Big Finish, Fourth Doctor Stories on BBC Radio 4 Extra. That's right, first season of Big Finish's Fourth Doctor Adventures is coming to BBC Radio 4 later this month. The season starts with Destination Nerva, first released in January 2012, which reunites Tom Baker with his former companion Leela, played by Louise Jameson, and a story written and directed by Nick Briggs, which sees the Doctor return to the location first seen in the 1975 story arc in space. And, of course, they give you the list of the titles there, which was Renaissance Man, Wrath of the Iceni, the Energy of the Daleks, Trail of the White Worm, and the Osiden Adventure. And Tom Barry Baker previously revived the character of the Fourth Doctor in a series of stories by for BBC audiobooks, which were broadcast on Radio 4 in Extra in 2011. Since 2012, he, started in, he, yeah, he has starred in four seasons 
of the fourth Doctor Adventures for Big Finish, and a fifth season is planned to be released later this year. Or sorry, next year, sorry. The series begins on Radio 4 on Saturday, the 16th of May at 6 p.m. Radio 4 Extra can be heard globally on the BBC iPlayer. All right, it's also on Doctor Who News today. The Scientific Secrets of Doctor Who BBC Books are to publish the first official guide to the science of Doctor Who this coming June, written by novelist Simon Gurrier and, or is it Gurrier? Forgive me if I got that wrong, guys. And in the public astronomer, I'm sorry, public astronomer at the Royal, sorry, Royal Observatory, Royal Observatory Greenwich, Dr. Mira Kukula. So the Scientific Secrets of Doctor Who is published in hardback and as an ebook from the 4th of June and is available to pre-order from the Amazon from their Amazon shop. And here is a link to it right here. So this is what happens when I forget to shut my Skype program off. I say I hate when I do that. Okay, jumping on over to Kasturbus, Dr. Stephen Moffat recalls why he left Twitter. And I thought this was pretty interesting given the fact that we just found out today that Joss Whedon has officially quit Twitter because of stupid threats and you know stupid abusive people who are throwing screamy meme fits over something that might have been in the pipeline all along but you know hasn't been talked about. And it's about the full Black Widow movie nonsense. Now, for one... If they had a story that was decent to put Black Widow on a solo film, I'm sure they would have done it by now, but that's them, and I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so an interview with his son featuring his wife and Sue Virtue. Dr. Stephen Moffat answered a fun Q&A question, which enabled him to recall and explain of just for just a few moments why he quit with the Twitter social network back in 2012. And... Uh, um, um, okay... And it goes into the explanation right there. So he's trying to sit. No, the thing was, is now he's saying, I've, I've got, I got enough on my plate, so I'll just get rid of my Twitter account. The truth was, like I said, he was getting some really abusive stuff also. Uh, stuff that was just nonsense. No, I had nothing to do with it. Okay. Okay, so elsewhere in the video, you can also hear Moffat's thoughts on time travel, answering questions with relationship deal breakers, and and what what he is if you are, you know, the you are what you eat thing and more. Oh, wow. Big deal. Okay. Uh, lastly, for today, on a sad note, Nigel Terry has passed away. Um, he was 69 years old. Now, I remembered him originally from all the way back in Excalibur. And that was a very, you know, he played King Arthur. And see how, yeah, that was, that was back in 81. Um, very interesting movie, you know, very interesting take on the Arthur legend. Um, of course, most of you folks out there know him. From, as General Cobb from The Doctor's Daughter from the 2008 story. Uh, it was the 10th Doctor one. So it's sad to see, you know, that he's left us. Um, also, we heard that over the weekend we lost Grace Lee Whitney, who played Yeoman Janice Rand on Star Trek. And it's kind of sad now that, you know, I'm getting on a bit, and now I'm seeing the Enterprise crew going one by one. Uh, but it's really sad to hear that we've lost Nigel Terry. It was nice that he got to you know, pop up in that Doctor Who adventure for us. But unfortunately, he has now officially left the planet. Uh, of course, he died last Thursday after contracting emphysema. Well, that's all I have for you, folks. Um, sorry I drug it out. Sorry I had to blow some snot. But, uh, well, it's that time of the year. Allergy season has kicked in, unfortunately. Also, sometime, hopefully within the next, say, 48 hours, there should be a very interesting announcement coming up. Hopefully, if all things go are going to schedule, and I think you folks will enjoy it when I announce it. Okay, but that's all I'm saying. On it. It's not that I'm being top secretive. It's just I'm a very superstitious guy and a superstitious guy. Until I get something locked down to confirm and all that, I, I believe in the jinx theory. Don't go around, you know, counting your chickens for their hatch type of deal. So that's why I'm not going to get right too excited about it yet. But hopefully, if everything pans out, you're going to get a surprise on the 18th. So may want to keep Monday, May 18th locked into your brain box because if I get the email that I'm waiting for here, um, hopefully within the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to have that locked down and then I'll make an announcement for you, okay? Well, until next time, guys, catch you all later. Don't forget to watch The Omega Files this weekend. And I know we're just doing John Carpenter movies, and I, I do notice that, yeah, the thing is, when we do movie reviews and whatnot, people tend to go ahead and watch them anyway. We, we have a lot of fun doing them. And plus, you may want to go out and watch the movie. You may not want to, given the fact that we didn't 
We didn't we didn't rate Village of the Damned all that awful high. I can tell you that right now. I think the highest we got out of it was a six. <laughs> but this week coming up is 1998's Vampires um, with uh, heck, James Woods, uh, one of the Baldwin guys, and a whole bunch of other folks. Right, uh, Cheryl Lee from you know you remember her from Twin Peaks, that whole you know, that whole stuff. Until this later, guys. Catch you later. Take it easy. Take care. Have a good one.